Hi, I'm Steve Owen. Here we are in a Skoda Octavia RS. We had to put it through two its four paces. Five. 245, don't forget that. It's very important. And uh, uh, what do you do in your day job? Uh, a steering wheel attendant normally, so luckily I've got one in my hands at the moment. A steering wheel attendant. <laughs> Are you any good at it? Uh, Moderately so, I hear. Every now and then I slip off the brake pedal and do you? put a good lap together. Yeah. Now, um, you just told me that when you're around. Um, Jesus Christ, you're going much faster around here than I did. It's good to look at. That's, that's the thing with professionals. That um, brake is all, like every corner is just about an emergency brake. Absolutely, like on the limit every single time. Yeah. Whereas I, I, I can't bring myself to do that. Now, what mode have you got it in? I mean, I'm using sport mode at the moment. Yep. So just stiffens up the suspension, makes the, uh, the down changes a little bit more aggressive, holds the roads a bit longer. Yep. Um, but with the DSG gearbox, you know, it just makes the up and down changes so quick and smooth. So you're using the paddles, I notice. Absolutely. And the thing I love about the, the paddles, you can get to a corner like this one, brake, turn into the corner, and do every down, every driver's must not do. Downshift in the middle of the corner, auto matches the revs. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Away you go. Because you lose power otherwise. Well, and it's just, it, you can carry more speed into the corner and it's all the yep. gear. But great ABS in this car too, so I don't mind using it in a big big sweep and brake like this. It wasn't game to do that. And just a, the gentlest, gentlest drift. Just a little bit of tire noise is good. Yeah. A lot of time it was as bad, so yeah. but through this little tight stuff, you will You've get a little bit of tight tires in your time. I've been through a lot of tires actually. <laughs> I hate to think how many tires I've been through. And what do you normally drive in your day and your uh, like when you're not your uh, steering well, wheel attendant? Because Pro Driver are a Ford team, we get to drive a couple of some Fords around. So at the moment, right. I'm in a uh, a uh, what am I in? A, an Everest, which is actually not a bad little car. Do you know? I really like that. Like, Too bad. I would have one of those. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good, it fits my surfboards in it really well. So you just told me that you're 40 and some change. Oh, Bloody yeah. hell. <laughs> um, so how long have you been driving for? This year was my 19th Bathurst. So, yeah, so it's been a while, it comes up pretty quick. I thought I'd been watching you for a while. <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I've got pretty familiar with the track, so... Good brakes, I think. Down, yeah. Downhill so too. You got in, you put those up markers out for us. Yeah, I did. Earlier, yep. So that um, we didn't come into that uh, corner too fast. Well, you notice this corner here as well. Like it's a blind approach. Yeah. If you don't know the track, yeah. Um, it's and you, if you wait till you see the apex before you jump on the brakes, it's too late. Well, so I've been um, here a couple of times, and I, I do that. that those are these the, the time. This one. I always get into a drift I, I get that fixated, you know, if I was on a road it would be kind of that number plate fixation. Yep, yep. Um, I try and not do it, I just can't manage it. Well what people do, they get down on a corner like this and they look at the obstacle straight ahead, yep. which is what you're about to crash into, and then wherever you look your hands just take you there, so... That's right. You've got to just try and ignore that obstacle and say, right, I know there's I know there's a tree there, but this is the apex and this, this is what I want to get to, and hopefully I get there. did a slalom the other day in that tight bar I was telling you about. And, and I said to the guy, uh, I've gone around really fast this time because uh, I was doing what you told me to, which was look at the middle, not look at the yeah, absolutely. what I'm trying to that, miss. That's, that's slam exercise, that's exactly what that's designed yeah. for. And that just proves a point because as soon as you start looking at those cones, you start getting them. And the next time around, I intentionally looked at the cone, sure enough, I hit it. Yep, absolutely. I thought, geez, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, so, how do you find this um, as opposed to what you drive professionally? It's I mean, a lot softer, obviously. It is, but the good thing about these cars, you can drive this around a racetrack and you can also drive it down the shops to get milk as well. On you the know? same tyres? Yeah, on the, like this is all standard road going yeah. c componentry at the moment. Some of the faster cars that I get to drive around racetracks you know, are amazing, they've got great downforce, and, you know, yeah. but they drive quite badly to be, to be honest. You know? But you wouldn't, thing, drive that, you, you wouldn't want to drive that on a normal road? Well, Unfortunately, I need to save a bit more to be able to have a track car and a road car, so for me, it's it's got to do both, so... Like, <laughs> and you don't have to pay for it. Exactly right. So I think you might feel very differently about taking cars to tracks if you, um, uh, you know, had a, a job at a milk bar and you um, had to pay for all the tyres and the fuel. And the, all that sort there of is stuff something quite nice about wearing out someone else's brakes and tyres. That's why I like track days. Exactly right. I don't have to pay for them. So um, you find this as a as a road going track car. 
uh, it's soft enough to be used every day. Yeah, and it, just, it drives nicely. We, we drove it here from Sydney. It's yeah. you know it's beautiful down the motorway. That that uh, that, that traffic on the way up was uh, just appalling. Well, unfortunately, if you live in Sydney, that's what you've got to yeah. deal with. So, which is why I quite like the um, the active cruise control. I just yeah. left that on and let it do its yeah. job. Yeah, exactly. You're giving me a facelift. This is good. I, I need, what I need to do is have you all the time. When the picture's about to be taken, got it. Because of the G-forces? Yeah. <laughs> it's Actually, a facelift. It's, it's surprisingly good under brakes. It is. The G's well, and brakes. I, I know, one thing I noticed is that you're much harder on the brakes than me. But, um, <laughs> yeah, like down, downhill braking like that, that's, that's making some serious G's. It is. And also, um, that uh, it's uh, squibbling remarkably. It's, it's not um, not trying to pull itself out of line. No, and because I've done a few of these track days now, you get a feel for the, the fantastic electronics you've got behind you in case yeah. you get it wrong. Now it's, you've we, left all the electronics on except for what goes off in um, in VRS mode. Yeah, so in, in, in sport mode, it, it dulls it down a little bit. Yeah. So it lets the car move around a little bit more. Yeah. A little bit, you know, sportier. It's designed for this sort of stuff. Yeah. But at the same time. It's still there in the background, so if you do happen to get it wrong, you've got it there to help you out. Which I've got to be honest, I, I got one of those corners horribly wrong before oh, and I am. Um, every now and then I get into it as well yeah. and I kick myself because I say I've made a mistake and the computers have to come in and rescue me. So it's and not it's not uncommon to do it, you know, it just stops you from having those big slides and potentially ending in disaster. And of course it would be disastrous um, here there's no runoff anywhere. No, there's that's right. No kitty litter to save us. There's no. It's uh, a great piece of road, but that's a pretty big tree over there. So it is a big tree. <laughs> we'll try and stay away from that if we can. I'd, look, I'd appreciate that because you did on my side. On more the point, I'm sure you wouldn't hit on your side. No, it's uh, any tree versus a car is a fairly bad argument. Uh, so, any final thoughts? Enjoying just doing laps, having a chat actually. It's, uh... And that's the other thing too. One thing I've noticed every time I um, I get a professional driver to take me out on a hot lap, I get them to drive and them to talk rather than me doing more talking. Um, for two reasons: a, you know what your um, uh, capacities are, but you also know what the car's capacity is too. Yeah. And that you can make any car. Oh, we can, but at the end of the day, oh. the car's going to do it, you know. Well, no, that's right. So it's interesting to hear that you, um, but when we're on our way out, I asked you if you were going to take the manual, and you actually headed to this one. The, I think the other car was a manual. Yeah, we've got one manual and, and two DSGs, but the DSGs, like in this tight stuff, it's just so easy to whip back a gear. Yeah, Even really in, the, in the middle of the corner, it'll auto blip the revs. The upshifts are a little bit faster, so as much as I'm a a die-hard manual man myself, yeah. I'd have to I'd have to say that DSG is the way to go. And the other thing that I noticed uh, about, well, about all professional drivers really, but is that you're incredibly relaxed behind the wheel. Yeah, I think you need to be. It's, as, soon as, you, as soon as you get that big rush of adrenaline and you start hanging off the wheel and doing these ones on the wheel, you're losing balance with the car. The smoother you can be on everything, the better it is and the more grip you've got. And well, you've spent all that time trying to set it up for a corner, the last thing you want to do is stuff it up right in the middle of it. Yeah, exactly right. And you listen to some of the best drivers in the world, like Schumacher and those sort of guys, yeah. and people, are, people think so he's... Much anymore. <laughs> well, he probably still drives right if he, want, if he, if he ever wakes up. But, yeah. uh, it, I've heard numerous stories about how, how he sounds like he's having a cup of tea in the race car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I got um, Alan Jones to take me around um, Mal Malawa, Malawa? Yep. Yep. Um, in a GSF. And now he's 70s-ish. And it was... Uh, he's one Still of those, drives all right. He does. Uh, uh, and he's... You, you wouldn't know that he wasn't having a beer on the, on the veranda. <laughs> but, geez, he takes no prisoners. No, no, that's right. And... I mean, he's been racing for 50 years, you know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. just one of those things that it's just natural to him. He could find an apex in the dark, you know, he's just that good. I, you know, look, I've had so many professional drivers explain to me where an apex is and what an apex is, and I still <laughs> can't find it. No, yeah. Slowest part of the corner, yeah, I know, mate, but go and stand there, go and stand, and the only time I ever find it is when you've been out beforehand and put a cone, a cone on. there, yeah. yeah, yeah, which I appreciate greatly because, um, 
I'm the first to admit I'm a crap driver. But, but then what happens when we, take the, when we take the cone away, then you're on your own again. So it, all we're doing is just from, <laughs> from having driven around so many different racetracks, is just putting a mental cone on the track yourself, yeah, you know? Like yeah. it's still, we're still using the same reference point. Oh no, absolutely. But it's, it's uh, where, where you put it is not where I think <laughs> it's going to be. Yeah. And yeah, I, okay. you know, I try and, 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 you know, I'm trying not to look like an idiot yeah, as well. Yeah. But then I kind of go out and realize how crap I really am. <laughs> no, it's, well, that's what we're here for. If you want yeah. to go and do some more laps, you're more than welcome to. There's, well, I always, always enjoy just being the passenger. It's the only time I like to be in a car and a passenger. You were surprisingly good, actually. Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm like that all the time. Well, are some people not relaxed? Yeah, a lot of, pe lot of people, there's a lot of screaming and yelling and... Really? Yeah. I could do that if you like. I mean, if, it, <laughs> if it'll make you feel better. Well, some, sometimes I don't know whether to be... Uh, to take it as a, an insult that your driving's that bad that you're scaring people, or <laughs> take it as a compliment 